It's Sunday, May 22nd here at the West End Gun Club. It's the fourth Sunday of the month, and this would normally be an NRL 22 match day here, um, but there is no match because there's no official course of fire for May, because right now it's the NRL 22 National Championship. So when there's the National Championships, they don't, they don't publish a course of fire. Uh, for those of you who follow my vlog, I had surgery earlier this month, this month or late April? Early this month, earlier in May, and so I had planned not to have an event today, because I didn't, I would, I didn't know if I would have, uh, be capable of putting on any sort of event, um, and I didn't have time anyway because I was in like post recovery. So that being said, I'm doing well. I'm out here just to do some just casual shooting. I did want to test out some ammo that I have, so I'm just going to do that. And uh, I have to do some cleanup in the Connex container because apparently some mice went in there, and so I'm going to mask up later and then do some cleaning in there. Because um, who wants hantavirus, right? Anyway, I'm going to clean out that condos container uh, before I leave today. And uh, try to seal up a few things in some sealed containers um, so they don't get dirty. But yeah, <laughs> whole other story there. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish uh, getting set up here. I got a, got a portable bench over there and I'm going to staple up some targets. And then we'll do a little shooting. As I stated earlier, I'm going to test out some new ammo that I acquired. And as you can see here, I acquired some more Ely ammo. And <clears throat> I did pick up a new lot of Ely 10X. And if you saw my previous range vlog, this stuff was shooting 1130 feet per second, which is pretty hot out of my voodoo compared to Lapo Center X, which is only 1085. And they said that the spec on this ammo is only supposed to be around the upper upwards of 1080. So why it's shooting 1130 feet per second, I don't know. I posted some stuff, um, questions on various uh, internet outlets, and I got some pretty non-constructive feedback about the velocities, but uh, a few people actually gave me some valid information, said, hey, this stuff shoot does shoot fast out of my gun, etc." So it seems like this is standard. Why it shoots that fast, I don't know. Someone stated they test in 26 inch test barrels, which might make sense, but I can't imagine you would have a 40 foot per second difference from a 26 to a 20. Maybe you will, I don't know. Anyway, they said they, this stuff is tested in a 26 inch test barrel, which could, <clears throat> could explain why I'm getting 1130 out of this 20 inch barrel. Anyway, I did acquire some Ely Match, which I've heard this is the equivalent to Lapo Center X. So this is like Ely's uh, direct competitor to that. And I did get some Ely Contact and some Ely Force just to try this stuff out, um, see how it shoots. Um, curious to see what they, the velocities and if they shoot decently out of my voodoo, uh, without any lot testing, of course. Remember, you got to always lot test your, your gun, so you can't just buy ammo and think that it's going to shoot well. Um, because even, you know, even the best ammo, certain lots shoots uh, better than others. You know, I don't want to go down that whole rabbit hole again, but go read up on it and you'll find out about, uh, lot testing room for ammo. Anyway, let's go ahead and... Let's shoot some 10x first. Um, it's a clean coal, it's a clean barrel, so I'm gonna have to season it up a little bit. But uh, we shoot 10x, see what the velocities are. I'm curious. It's probably gonna be it's probably gonna shoot pretty hot, I think. But still want to know. First shot of the day, 11.29 feet per second. So it's already showing the propensity of shooting fast. Eleven fourteen. This is again a clean cold bore.
Yeah, average 1121, SD of 5.3. I'm gonna go ahead and reset the series and then start from a fresh set after shooting five warm up rounds. I mean, usually you wanna shoot, I don't know, I've heard a lot of different things about how many rounds you need to warm up with 22. You know, 10, 20 rounds, 50 rounds, who knows, but we'll just call, we'll call like five or 10, or five to 15 in warm ups, and then uh, we'll shoot a few groups or whatever. bad round. So 20 shots total out of Ely 10X. Um, we're looking at an average of 11.23 with an SD of 6.4. I did throw a round there, but I can't, I don't know, that was weird. One round went bad. Uh, decent groups. But let's go ahead and move on to uh, the, uh, let's shoot Ely match, because I'm curious how Matt shoots. That is um, since it's the Lapua Center X equivalent, curious how well it is in the Voodoo. I will say I'm not a fan of the Ely boxes. Um, it's nice that they're made out of plastic compared to paper or cardboard of Lapua. But I just don't like how these things... I guess you can just peel it and reseal it. I don't know. Maybe it's better. I'm just used to Lapua. Maybe that's why I don't like the Ely boxes. Usually I would use my a tool to load these mags to avoid that whole rim lock situation, which I really have even without the tool, but uh, you're really not supposed to apparently use the, e the ears on the magazine to load the mags. You're not supposed to be yanking it down like this, but everyone does it because it makes sense. Um, I can think of the real, a real way to do it without like the a mag loader tool is just to sort of kind of put a little pressure there while you're putting pressure with your with the round to, to load on top of the other round and just sort of use both in conjunction and that should avoid the rim lock in general. Well, I shot two really good groups actually. Um, and Ely, uh, Ely match apparently shoots pretty high. I mean, this is, 10 rounds to warm up because we're switching ammo types. But right now, a 10 shot aggregate is 1124 average with SD of 5.4. So he just, it looks like Ely shoots pretty hot in compared to Lapua. Uh, it's unfortunate that they, uh, if it's true that they base this off of 26 inch barrels because I mean, Ely is probably designed for people that shoot. I mean, it, Olympic, style shooting, three position, small bore, etc. So it makes sense from that standpoint that they have longer barrels. But most other people don't shoot long barrels in 22s, especially modern 22s. And you know, if it shoots accurate, it shoots accurate and you shouldn't care if it shoots hot. But I feel like we do have to worry about transonic supersonic transonic once you're breaking the sound barrier and then coming under we do have to worry about that but on paper this thing's shooting shooting accurate i reset my series let's shoot some more and get some data here Right now, it looks like Ely. Uh, this is a 20-shot aggregate after shooting some warm-up rounds. 
Average 1124 feet per second with an SD of 4.8. My first warm up groups were pretty good, but my subsequent groups after that opened up. Although I can see that this is probably decent ammo if you just hold it right. But uh, Ely Match is pretty decent. Again, it's just shooting faster than I would want it to. I would, I would be willing to go up to 1100, 1105, but um, I want to keep it under supersonic. But I don't know. People are shooting Ely, they shoot Ely long range just, just fine. Like, you know, beyond 300 yards, 400 yards. Maybe I just have to get past that whole concept over the mentality of not liking fast ammo. Anyway, let's go ahead and run through this Ely, Ely contact and Ely force and then uh, uh, get some data out of those. Ely Contact and Ely Force are both 42 grain loads as opposed to 40 grain. They use 42 grain bullets. Um, they're not, they're round nose as opposed to their flatter nose like their Panics and Match. But Contact shot a 20 round aggregate of 1136 average feet per second with an SD of nine. And in Force, I didn't even bother. I shot five rounds and it's shooting 1214 average SD of 4.3, which is pretty good. Uh, but this does not, I mean, it's, it's pretty high velocity stuff, apparently. And maybe I'll throw this in a 1022. I didn't bring my 1022 with me today. But maybe I'll try this out in the 1022 to see how this stuff shoots. Um, but it seems like Ely Match is pretty good. I'll bring in the targets uh, later and we'll go over it. But um, Ely Match shot better than Ely 10X for me. And just the velocities are up there. They're way above 1120. Um, anyway. I'm going to do a few more things here. Um, I got my CZ over there. I'll probably bring that over as well and shoot that. And uh, I'll continue on with this morning. brought in the targets let's take a quick look at them starting with the left side this is Ely 10x which shot decently um, it's five rounds here five 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 maybe ten I have no idea but yeah it's about 25 rounds total um, shot okay um, still shooting around 1130 feet per second and here we have Ely match which shot really well this is the first five rounds after 10x which shot pretty good that was the next five rounds that is legit five rounds in almost one hole then shot another five rounds, which opened up five rounds. And I don't know, I opened up quite a bit here, but I don't know why, why I couldn't replicate this on these. But this is still shooting around 1120, low 1120s feet per second. A little faster than I want to shoot ammo out of my gun, but it is what it is. And here we have the contact, which, eh, a lot of up and down stringy, which could be me, but um, it shoots so-so. Um, you're talking about an inch total, maybe that's a three-quarter inch, half inch maybe, three-quarter inch at 50 yards. And this is Ely Force, which is really fast at 1,200 feet per second, 1,220. Um, but that's a decent group though. But high velocity tends to shoot pretty tight at 25 and 50 yards. And then um, I shot the CZ and wanted to shoot, uh, sorry, trying to get this camera tripod moved over what was this this is Ely contact I think Ely match which didn't shoot very well either and then I started shooting Center X and Center X isn't shooting well either out of my CZ and I'm just wondering if I should probably rebarrel a gun because it seems like as of late my CZ is just falling off significantly um, these are about three quarter inch groups this is not that's like an inch group three quarter inch uh, this is crap one inch group and this is like 
this is a five round group and that's a five round group right there, which is really bad. So I'm thinking about rebarreling my, my CZ. I'm not sure if that barrel is just, just, I don't know what I did to it, but maybe the barrel's just going, even with the tuner on or off, it just, I don't know. I should be able to find ammo that shoots well in it. And even SK rifle match started shooting less, less, uh, or started shooting worse in it. So I don't know. Maybe I'll invest in a Lilja or a Lila, Lilja, Lilja barrel. Well, we'll see. The one item that people probably expect me to bring to the range today that they've seen on my other social media feeds is the Trigger Cam 2.1. So here's the issue. I acquired that because I was kind of interested in trying out a behind the scope camera for to show like in in the, you know, in the scope view when I'm actually shooting. The problem is I didn't realize it, but the Trigger Cam does not fit around a zero compromise optic 5 to 27's uh, ocular bell. It's a little bit over 50 millimeters and the trigger cam goes as high as 48. Uh, some people said that you can do it, um, but I looked at it and there's limitations and you're really squeezing that or like trying to fit that thing over it. And I don't like that idea. So I put it on my collis, but my collis, if you don't, you know, I mean, if you forgot or aren't aware, it's on my, my uh, center fire six Creedmoor. So I'm here at the rimfire range, can't shoot center fire here, so I don't have my trigger cam. I thought about putting on the back of my CZ, or on my CZ rather, with the Athlon Optics Argos, Argos? BTR Gen 2. And the problem is that, with that is that the illumination for the reticle is on the ocular bell, and so it blocks the uh, trigger cam. So there's a lot of weird things with these, you know, with these scope cameras and little nuances. And I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do as far as if I'm gonna keep it. I haven't even used it yet. So I'm trying to get up uh, on the center fire range sometime to shoot it, to see how it works. Um, I thought about just putting my call on my, my Voodoo, but I'm just too lazy to put it on there. Plus I don't have a, I could use my, my rings, but I would rather do it with a single piece. I should, well, I, yeah, I, I want, would like to put the collis on a single, a one-piece mount, so I can. It's easier to take it on and off. It's easier to index. Anyway, um, that's where we're sitting with the trigger cam. So I bought it, and it kind of little disappointed in, like, not really able to use it on my gear. Anyway, but the one piece of gear that I am going to talk about today, if you follow my my social media or my blog, which I already have a review posted, is the Swarovski Optic. NL Pure 12 to 42, or 12 by 42 rather, not 12 to 40, but 12 by 42. So it's a fixed power binocular with uh, 12 magnification, 42 millimeter objective lenses. This is kind of the pinnacle right now of binoculars. And sorry, I'm trying to reorient this thing so you can see me past binoculars. But I acquired these NL Pures because, you know, the other match director here. Um, he has the NL Pures, the 12 by 42 And I looked through them, I said, wow, these are incredible. And I was really, in, I was really impressed by the NL Pure clarity. Uh, and the 12X, it was the field of view is really good for a 12. It's just equivalent to a 10. And so after looking at his many times, and the fact that I can handhold it and I had the clarity that you're seeing out of this thing compared to my Vortex Vipers, which are sitting in my Jeep. Actually, let me go grab them real quick. Here are my Vortex Viper HD 10x42s. Then the field of view on these is pretty much, I can't recall the specs. I think it's 330, 340 feet at 1,000 yards, but these, the 12Xs have a 339 foot field of view at a thousand yards. So the field of view is the same. If you've gotten the 10X NL Pures, I think your field of view goes up to 390 feet roughly. I'll put those in a caption in this video when I edit it. Basically, the NL Pures have changed the game in terms of field of view. I mean, you're number one, you get Swarovski's uh, glass quality and clarity with edge to edge edge to edge clarity 
with field of view that is significantly improved. So a lot of people now are buying 10Xs when they normally would run 8s so they can get more magnification, but the same field of view as their 8s. And some people are now getting 12s because they're getting the same field of view as a 10, but now they're getting close to the magnification they'll get with a 15. And so I don't hunt, right? But there's a lot of people who do and they like to run combos like an 8X with a 15X. Well, they'll run an 8X handheld, run their 15X on their tripod. And there's a lot of people who use 15X and up binoculars for PRS competitions or NRL competitions, that type of long range steel competitions where you're just, you don't want a spotting scope, but you want something like a binocular to get more comfort uh, with long-term viewing and just better for steel as opposed to paper. And so people are running 15s, maybe even 20X, 20Xs. But that's where the 12X comes in right now. So it's changing the game in terms of people, whether or not they're gonna now run that combo of an 8X with a 15 and just run a single binocular. And I think this kind of fits that bill. For me, the reason why I went with the 12 is because I'm doing it mainly for target shooting situations or scenarios where I want to spot hits on target, like steel, not on paper, but it just hits on steel then I can spot those shots with a 12X and still get the field of view that's incredible. And then this Swarovski glass clarity. I thought about getting the 10 and that's what took me for so long to decide whether or not to go to 10X because 10X is kind of like the de facto standard for most people. It's like the great balance between handheld holding and a tripod, use, uh, tripod usage. But given that the 12X, after I looked at him for, uh, at you know the other match directors, his, I could handhold them with especially when i have the headrest it kind of made it like just you had to go 12s and right now i think the real question is not whether you go 10 10 or 12 is now do you go uh you go 12s for sure but now do you go eight or tens and i think right now you might as well go eight because the nl pure eights i can't recall off the top of my head but you're exceeding 430 i think 440 foot field of view at a at at thousand yards with the 8Xs, and that's just incredible. And it just kills everyone else's binocular at the same magnification range. But so far I've been trying this out. I've been going around uh, my local parks and and whatnot. I haven't shot, the, I haven't used these during a match yet because we haven't had a match since I got in these, but the clarity at, the clarity, the image clarity is excellent. I mean, you can just resolve so much with these, uh, and not just because you have 12X versus 10X, but it's just the fact that the quality of the image is just so much better. And I'm gonna say that my Vipers are good, right? I can, I've been able to use these effectively. The image is clear for the most part, right? I mean, without knowing blind, comparing to another binocular, these Vipers work great. I mean, I look at these, I've, I've looked at long distance, type deals and I've, I can see the Mirage with my binoculars if I want these Mirage or a wind, wind indicator. And they look good, but the second you pick up the NL Pures and you look through them, you just immediately see how much better the contrast is, the depth perception, the, the image in general on the edges. It just makes it look a lot more comfortable, the fast focus. I don't know. They are expensive binoculars. They run for $3,200. But for me, I felt they were worth it. I don't really use a spotting scope anymore now that I don't shoot high power where you need the spotting scope. Because um, you know, you're, I shoot an angle spotting scope in high power from all three positions, standing, sitting, and prone. But I don't use my spotting scope at all much anymore. And I think binocular right now is the best fit for me. And given that these are so good, I figure I'll go get these. So anyway, this is the latest toy that I have. I have a review on my blog at okabj.net. Check it out. Uh, my opinion is if you can afford them, get them. Otherwise, uh, there are plenty of other binoculars. If you don't look through these, I think you'll be satisfied with stuff. Uh, at the sub 1000 range the mavens are getting a lot of a lot of notice right now they're based out of san diego i don't know where they make them though i think they're maybe may made in japan um even these vortexes are fine i mean 
I think these work great. It's just, <laughs> once you look at something like this, uh, you're wondering why not just get this. And the same with the Z-Comp. Like I run the Zero Compromise on my Voodoo. I mean, the Collis was working fine for me and other scopes work fine. I mean, I can run the Vortex Razor HD AMG. That looks good. But the second you look through something like this, you know, like high, you know, tier one glass, you just, you just makes you wonder why bother shooting mid range or low range. If you can afford it, right? Like I said, it's just, and there is that whole issue of, you know, diminishing uh, return the higher you go up, you know? And I thought about just getting the Swarovski ELs for a while. And I'm thinking, you know, those are a thousand dollars less. But given what you're getting out of the NLPRs, I just felt like for me, why not just get the best I can, I can find in this form factor too, right? I mean, it's a very ergonomic form factor. Um, it's got a tapered bell, if you can tell on camera, it's tapered, so it fits your hand a lot better. It's just more comfortable. Uh, people think, wow, you know, really does that really matter? But once you hold them in your hand compared to something like this, where it just feels kind of bulky, it, you'll, you'll appreciate the ergonomics. But yeah, this is a new toy. Definitely run it with the headrest. Pretty cool. And I'm looking forward to using these more often at matches. And I've just been taking it around with me whenever I go for walks around like the uh, local wilderness park, uh, just to look at, you know, birds and whatnot. Um, but I'm probably gonna head out to the animal park because they have some very wide open areas where they have a lot of things roaming like rhinos and, and elephants and stuff. And they have like this over watch area. And I think it'd be nice to try these out to see how it looks out there, uh, especially in the various lighting conditions. All packed up, about to get out of the range. I do need to come back and clean up more of the stuff, you know, the shelves in here in this container. Um, I was using Lysol to spray all the areas, uh, especially where there were droppings, because if there's, if you're familiar with any sort of viruses with mice, like hantavirus and, and whatnot, it's all carried in the mice, mouse, rat urine and their droppings. And so once that like sort of gets mixed together and then it aerosol aerosolizes when the dust picks up and it you know when you touch it or disturb it and it mixes in the air and you breathe that in you know you can catch a virus that way and that's not good so i was just using the liquid you know a spray bottle of liquid lysol to sort of wet it all down kill whatever it can kill in there you know try to saturate the areas and then when you sweep it up it doesn't have the propensity to dust up in the air even though i was wearing a mask and everything you got to be careful with this stuff because uh, Hata and whatnot is serious, serious business. Anyway, I'm going to also talk, to, I'm going to email the, uh, one of the range maintenance guys. Cause I'm gonna, I can probably come back here Wednesday and, uh, so you can take a look at it. Cause I think I know where they're coming in from, where they came in from, but I don't know how they're going to fix that in the container. Anyway, um, not much today. I spent most of the time cleaning up, uh, but all the live fire was through mainly through the voodoo, just testing out that Ely. 10x match contact and not really force but i'll try the force with my 1022 but uh it seems like ely does shoot hot i mean it's going to shoot well over 11 10 11 20 feet per second i i don't really want to shoot that that fast in my my voodoos so i probably won't shoot ely um it shoots okay but i mean my lapo center actually it's better and it shoots at the velocities i want under 1100 out of a 20 inch bartley but I don't know, maybe I'll experiment with Ely later on at longer distances. But right now, why, why spend all that time shooting Ely when Center X shoots really well for me? So uh, I'll probably be out here Wednesday. Hopefully I'll get the NRL 22 June Course of Fire published in the next couple of days. I would, like to, I would like to prep for everything um, this upcoming Wednesday because I can come out here and do it on Wednesday. Otherwise, I'll have to wait till next weekend and do it then. Uh, but our next match will be in June on the 26th, the fourth Sunday of the month. That's going to be the start of the 2022-2023 NRL 22 season. So uh, pay attention for that. I'll link to the practice score page where our matches are done through. And I'll also link to the SoCal NRL 22 website, which is what I just I created. It's just a generic website for people to go to to get FAQs about the matches here at the West End Gun Club. And it has a quick link to register for the next match. Um, and then 
my Swarovski binocular. Uh, if you haven't gone to my blog yet, okfg.net, I do have an article with a write-up and a lot of photos on the NL Pure 12 by 42. Uh, should be a good read for you, anybody interested in spending $3,200 on a binocular. Uh, it's a good binocular, it's really good. Um, but comparatively speaking, my Viper PST HD, they're okay. I mean, not bad for, uh, for free, for me, they were free, but, um, for 500 bucks or 450, they're actually pretty decent. Although I haven't tried other ones like the Athlons or I haven't tried the Mavens, uh, for a long period of time, but the Mavens look pretty good. Um, but binoculars are an, are an investment. If you're going to invest money, why not go up and go up in tiers, I guess. I mean, there's also Leica, there's also Zeiss, and uh, there's also the ELs from Swarovski, which are being sold right now on the clearance because I think they're discontinuing the ELs. Um, not the EL range, but the ELs. I think they're getting discontinued. So you can get those for a pretty good price. And Swarovski will support their products. I mean, they can rebuild stuff years later. I mean, they're still building the older versions of the SLCs. So, or rebuilding or refurbishing those and repairing them. Anyway, that's it for today. Uh, Sunday, May, what is it? May 22nd here at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vlog.